Yo, okay, so hey guys, my name is Quinston and uh, I was going through my old catalog of videos, the data structure and algorithm videos, and I realized that I don't have a video for generating subsets uh, using recursion. So I do have a video generating power sets using bitwise manipulation, but I don't have a video which is, you know, generating uh, subsets using recursion. So I thought, you know, just for completion's sake, I'll make one video uh, which does that. So, so we are going to use a C++. Uh, for this so what's going to happen is the what we're going to do is we're going to have um, a number n and if the number n is equal to three we are going to generate subsets of uh, uh, obviously the null sub subset then we're going to have uh, one uh, then we're going to have two then we're going to have you know three and uh one two and then you're going to have two three and you're gonna have one three and then you're going to have one two three so these are the subsets that we're going to generate if n equal to three and, um, you know, you can take your imagination to n equal to 4 and 5 and 6 and so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do in order to get that output is we're going to just, you know, write the main function. Uh, I'm also going to import iostream. Import iostream. I'm also going to import, um, I think, vector. You're going to use a vector for this. Yes. Uh, hash include. Sorry. And I hate this stuff. You know, I, writing a lot of code in a lot of different languages really messes you up. It's hash include. Yes, not import. Ah, Python. <laughs> I like Python. Um, okay, so then we're going to do a using namespace STDs to use a standard namespace. So, um, yeah, I mean, that that's just basically it. I don't know why I used vector. Do I need to use vector? Let's see. I also need one. Oh, yeah, I do need to use vector because I need to append the elements into something, right? Yeah, that's it. So uh, we're going to have a function which says uh, it's going to return an int because why not? I'm going to say generate subsets and this is a function which is going to take the array itself so it's going to be a vector int array and you're also going to have an n value which is going to be the n value which we talked about now it's going to be an int n it could be long if you're doing some sort of hacker rank test cases but let's just keep it simple and keep it um as an n and then you will also have k which is going to act as the current value the current index of where you're at um, you'll figure that out when we get to the part where all the interesting things happen. So I also want one more function. Um, I'm just going to copy this. And this, we need one more function, which is going to just uh, print out the array. So print underscore vector is one function that I want. And uh, that function is going to just, you know, obviously print a vector. <laughs> so I'm going to go to for int i equal to zero. i is less than, I'm going to say int arr dot size which is going to give us the size of the uh, so this is going to give us the size of the vector and then it's going to parse it as an int because i don't know just c plus plus acts weird when i don't do this for some reason um and then you're going to do an i plus plus it's just a simple for loop uh you know i2 size of the vector and then you're going to do a c out um and you're going to do an arr of the value that you want to print out and then you're going to do a slash n yes that's what you're going to do because you want to put it at the new line do I want to put it in a new line? Probably not. I mean, I'm just going to copy this over here, put it there. And I'm just going to do a space over here and I'm going to remove this part. Because I, I don't think I want to put it in a new line. Maybe it's better if it's like just, you know, one after the other. And then you have the other value, which is after the thing is, you know, finished printing everything. You have it, you know, go to the new line. Uh, I could use endel, but uh, why? Like, it doesn't matter. Who cares? We're not doing any test cases. So um, N and K. Cool. Uh, so you have n and k. So for this, uh, this is going to be a recursive function. Uh, and let me just call it over here. So I'm just going to call it, I'm going to generate a vector, an empty vector, and just call it, I don't know, ARR, who cares, um, doesn't matter. I, I'm going to just call this function, then copy this, put it here, and then I'm going to, uh, okay, ARR, comma, it's going to be n, right? So n is going to be, let's say three, because we want three values in the subset. And, and then we want a uh, the k value which is initial is going to be zero so so after we do this i'm just going to write this function so this is going to be a recursive function right i mean and and because it's a recursive function what you need is the, the base case the, the every recursive function starts off with a base case so to have a base case um i'm going to write if uh let's think about this so if k is greater than n you're basically going overboard because every iteration is going to add one to k so if you're going above n it means there is an it either completed or there's an issue so i'm gonna say if k is greater than n that, that, that that's where you end the whole thing and else uh 
you have uh, the other value which is here I'm just gonna say print vector uh, handy tool print vector and then I'm just gonna print this vector which uh, this is the vector that's gonna store everything currently it's empty but we're gonna go through the whole thing and uh, print whatever you want to print out a and then you, you basically once you created the base case I'm gonna start appending values to uh, the array and then calling the recursive function again so I'm gonna start appending the values so it, like a vector right so you can append values to a vector using the push underscore back function in C++. So you're going to do an ARR dot push underscore back. And um, what I'm going to do in that case is take the K value and put it in, right? That's what she said. So take the K value and put it in. And uh, basically, I think that that works. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to straight up call this function. Um, and then I'm going to pass in uh, the array, which we had pushed in. Um, I'm going to say n equal to again n and then k equal to k plus 1. So the k is going to be k plus 1 because I want to deal with the next element. Okay. And uh, now if, if we just do this much, okay, if we just do this, okay, just do this. And I, I just save it and run, run it once. Hopefully you will see what I'm able to run um, clear. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say g plus plus. Let's not do, do anything fancy, just, you know, g plus plus. It says there's an error, non-void function return. Okay, I got to return zero. Return, man, come on. Come on, Quinston, you can do this. Return zero. Uh, it says one more return type is not there. Okay. Why did I just use void? Jesus Christ, why didn't I just use void? <laughs> it would have been so much easier. Okay, so we have dot slash a dot out. Let's see what happens here. So I have this value, right? Zero, one, two, and three, which means that... Um, you pushed it in, right? You pushed it and just called. So it's basically going through the recursive uh, loop, um, recursive stack loop, who cares? And it's just hitting them over and over again, appending them to the array. And then at the end, once you reach greater than n, it just prints everything out. Okay, so there's no, you know, there's nothing complex happening here. It's just appending it to the vector over and over and over again. And one thing I noticed is that we did 0, 1, 2, 3. I don't want 0, 1, 2, 3. So what I'm going to do is... I want to start from one, right? So I'm just going to write, uh, did I write one over there? I can write one over there, right? Yeah. If I write one over here, it's going to just print out. Let me just compile this one more time. Yep. One, two, three. So now what we need to do is we need to also create the tree, which is popping it and flipping it around, right? So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to do an ARR dot pop. Okay. Pop back. And uh, once you pop it, I'm just going to call this function again. Okay. Now this is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. Okay. This is where it happens. I'm going to just do this. Air it out. Bam. That's it. That, that, that's the answer. <laughs> that's it. That's what you do. So initially when we just did this, so when we did this over here, it didn't add any complexity to it. It was just appending it over and over again. But once we added the pop feature, what started happening is when the element got added, okay. And then the base case was called, there was something remaining in the stack. It came back and then started popping three. And then one, two, three happened. One, 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 two happened. Then after one, two happened, it called this function again, which went again and then popped something in the back. Then one, two, one, three happened. Again, one happened. Then went in the stack, popped it, went back in the stack, popped it, three happened. And then at the end, when nothing remained, nothing remained. <laughs> so that's how this works. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, you just have push it in, generate the subset again, call this recursively, then you pop it back and then you generate the subset again. It's literally the same line. I copied it literally the same line. And I think this is a beautiful algorithm. Uh, I do have a power set video, which does the same thing, but I thought the recursive function is a little bit more elegant. Um, it's, it's really good. I mean, it's, it's, be it's be beautiful. Absolutely. So yeah, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And, um, I don't know, maybe I'll make more coding videos. I'm not sure, but well, it's fun. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. See you later.